Okay, thank you very much. Welcome to this uh, afternoon session on uh, application, subsession, nets, and parsing. Uh, my name is Paolo Bottoni, I'm uh, from uh, Sapienza University of Rome. And uh, our first speaker is uh, uh, Matthias Barkowski from uh, Hasso Plattner Institute in Boston. And uh, the paper title of the paper is Host Graph Sensitive Retinets for Incremental Graph Pattern Matching, joint work with Olga Giese. Please. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so I guess I can uh, jump right in um, to uh, give you a brief overview of uh, what I'm going to talk about in the talk. Uh, first, I will reiterate the notion of graph queries and retinets as I'll be using them throughout the talk. Afterwards, uh, I will present our contribution, which is a host graph sensitive construction technique for retinets for incremental graph pattern matching, uh, which is based on three aspects. First of which is a host graph sensitive cost function for retinets. Uh, second, a heuristic construction algorithm, and finally, a technique for dynamically adapting the retinet to changing host graph characteristics. Uh, afterwards, uh, I will discuss our empirical evaluation, and finally, I'll conclude the talk. Uh, graph queries are basically a, a very useful tool for extracting information in the form of interesting patterns from potentially large graph structures that can be found in uh, multiple application domains such as social networks, uh, model-driven engineering, or bioinformatics. And the execution of graph queries, which is called uh, graph pattern matching, uh, basically corresponds to the subgraph homomorphism problem. And in some scenarios, we also have the, um, yeah, the particular problem that the same queries are repeatedly executed over the same host graph, which only undergoes minor changes in between executions. Uh, which would basically make the computation of query results from scratch every time the query is executed uh, unnecessarily expensive and calls for techniques for so-called uh, incremental graph pattern matching. A graph query in this talk is uh, characterized by a typed query graph Q, uh, which can be executed over a typed gra host graph H. Um, and this execution, as I already said, is uh, called graph pattern matching and uh, yields a set of typed graph homomorphisms from the query graph Q into the host graph H. And those homomorphisms are called matches. Note here uh, that uh, we only map in, in this presentation the uh, vertices explicitly and edges are mapped implicitly, which is a very common notion in practice. However, to also emulate uh, match uh, edge mappings, one could easily just model the edges as nodes. Uh, retinets or a retinet is a mechanism for executing a graph query and it is uh, effectively a decomposition of a potentially complex query graph into a network structure of simpler subqueries. Um, here in, in uh, this context of uh, graph queries characterized by type query graphs, retinets can have two kinds of nodes. Uh, the first of which is uh, the input node, which you can see here at the bottom. There are multiple of those. And each input node corresponds to a primitive subquery, which contains only a single edge. And the input node is therefore, in the execution of the retinet, responsible for extracting elements of a matching type from the host graph. Then the second kind of node is the so-called join node, which has two dependencies to other retinet nodes, and which composes pairs of compatible intermediate results uh, into more complex intermediate results. The results uh, of the execution of the individual uh, retinet nodes are stored in so-called indexers. Um, and because of this storage, the <laughs> because of this storage, uh, retinets naturally lend themselves to this incremental scenario um, where the results that were computed in the initial run of the query can simply be retained uh, and only have to be updated according to the changes um, that, that are made in between the runs of the queries. What's also interesting here is that uh, maybe it's also obvious for the same query graph, there can be a multitude of different retinets with different structures. And the structure of the retinet actually heavily impacts the performance uh, of the net with respect to both memory consumption and execution time. And in that sense, just to uh, 
I hope you allow me a brief detour. It is similar to uh, a concept called a search plan from a different method for graph query execution called local search. And in local search, the query graph vertices are simply iteratively mapped uh, into the host graph, where the ordering in which the vertices are mapped, also similar to the retinex structure, plays a very important role uh, in um, defining the, uh, the performance of the approach. And because of that, uh, there is also uh, a lot of uh, work on trying to compute efficient search plans for uh, local search. And most of these techniques, which have been performed to uh, have been shown to perform well, are so-called host graph sensitive techniques, which in their computation of a search plan also take properties of the host graph, the queries to be executed over into account. So from that, it seems uh, rather natural to uh, try to transfer this concept of host graph sensitivity to the creation of retinets. However, the problem here is that retinets are usually uh, executed in this incremental context where there isn't one fixed host graph with a fixed set of characteristics. Um, and therefore, retinets are usually created at very design time without any particular host graph uh, in mind. And therefore, the construction techniques used there are uh, basically host graph insensitive. So in this paper, uh, as the title suggests, we try to come up with a host graph sensitive approach. And our technique is based on a host graph sensitive cost function for retinets, which in turn is based on the observation that the main effort for executing a retinet uh, basically stems from propagating the intermediate results computed by the individual nodes through the net. And as a brief reminder here, uh, an intermediate result uh, in the end, corresponds to a tuple in, the, in an indexer in the retinet, which corresponds to, or which then corresponds to, a match for a query subgraph. Uh, and therefore, our idea for this cost function is to simply estimate the number of matches uh, for the query uh, subgraphs that are relevant to the net. For a subgraph that consists only of nodes and has no edges, that is uh, very simple. Uh, we can compute the number of matches for such a subgraph by just computing the size of Cartesian products of correctly typed host graph vertices. So in this case, for instance, we might have uh, a subgraph that consists of two persons, and we have a host graph that has three persons. So we have a uh, we have potentially have nine matches, or we exactly have nine matches for that query graph. The introduction of an edge uh, to the subgraph basically acts as a filter that uh, filters or that uh, only um, then allows those kinds of mappings for the vertices where we also have a corresponding mapping for the edge. And uh, the portion of these vertex mappings uh, is given by the number of edges of, a, of the correct type divided by the size of the Cartesian uh, product of potential source and target vertices, uh, which in this case is uh, 2 divided by 9. Uh, so here, uh, this function would compute uh, correctly compute the number of matches for this query subgraph in H to B2. Uh, if the query contains multiple edges, then we can estimate the combined filtering rate of uh, these edges uh, by just using the product of the individual filter filtering rates. However, obviously, as maybe also indicated by the fact that this now estimates the number of matches to be 2 divided by 9, uh, this makes uh, this computation just an estimate. Uh, however, since this is also very similar to heuristics that are used in the context of local, of local search, uh, we think that it, it is still a, a useful cost function, uh, and that is then later also validated in, in our evaluation. So with this cost function in mind, uh, we can uh, construct a retinet, which will then be host graph sensitive if we use the cost function. and our uh, procedure there um, basically relies on the fact that a retinet uh, corresponds to a recursive binary partitioning of a query graph. And to compute such a partitioning um, for a query graph Q and a host graph H, we start by initializing two partitions, P1, which is initialized to the complete query graph, and P2, uh, which is initialized to the empty graph. Then we find all the weakly connected components in the query graph. And if there is more than one component, uh, we simply try to somehow balance the partitions um, by greedily moving components from partition one to partition two, such that the cost function um, or the sum of the cost functions for the two partitions is reduced. Otherwise, if there's only one partition, we first check whether the query graph is already primitive. That is, it consists of a single vertex or edge, in which case we don't have to partition any further and simply return uh, the query graph. 
Otherwise, uh, in, in the last case where the query graph consists of a single weakly comp uh, connected component, um, we do something very similar to this moving of components, uh, but this time for edges. But I'll also uh, illustrate that on the next slide. And then finally, uh, we recursively partition the partitions further. Uh, also, this uh, method for balancing uh, the edges is rather uh, straightforward. It uh, starts by trying to detect an edge in partition one, uh, which if moved from partition one to partition two, uh, potentially with its adjacent vertices, would improve uh, the sum of the cost estimates for the two partitions. Um, if there is such an edge, uh, we choose the one for which the improvement would be the biggest. Otherwise, uh, we choose an edge um, to move using a different heuristic. And then we move that edge and repeat the process of trying to find uh, an, an edge to move based on the cost function until there is no edge whose movement would improve the cost function or until um, the number of edges in partition one drops to one. And the reason for this uh, second condition and also this uh, forced movement of at least one edge uh, is basically there to guarantee that uh, both partitions are uh, proper subgraphs of the initial query graph and thus that the algorithm terminates. So with this uh, cost function and this uh, greedy algorithm, um, we have the tools to create a static host graph sensitive retinet. Um, however, as I already uh, discussed, these nets are usually used in these incremental scenarios where the host graph may evolve over time. And thus an initially constructed retinet can become inadequate. For instance, uh, we might have um, initially a social network with a very le uh, low density of nose edges. And then as maybe the, the density of nose edges increases, um, the initially constructed net might become inadequate. So there, uh, our idea is also uh, pretty straightforward. Um, our idea is to, from time to time, uh, compute a new network structure uh, or a new retinet structure and uh, replace the old net with this after populating the new net. Uh, and this obviously causes a potentially significant overhead in execution time, but it might improve uh, memory consumption and future runtime of the RetiNet. So this trade-off uh, indicates that we require some strategy for deciding when to recompute and repopulate. One option would be to just go for a simple periodic strategy, which just uh, decides based on the number of host graph changes that have occurred. However, any such strategy uh, runs the risk of choosing an inadequate uh, frequency and thus causing too high of an overhead or adapting to host graph changes too slowly. Uh, therefore, in the paper, we instead pr uh, propose to trigger the recomputation based on the retinet size and the internal processing of changes, uh, which looks like this. Um, this is basically the procedure for uh, processing a sequence of host graph changes C uh, using a retinet R. And it processes these changes in a loop, at the beginning of which we store the initial size of the retinet R. And we reset an internal modification counter uh, of the retinet to zero, where a modification um, of the retinet corresponds either to the addition of a tuple to one of the net's indexers or the removal of a tuple from one of the indexers. Uh, then we repeatedly incrementally process host graph changes until this modification count um, exceeds the size of the initial retinet, at which point we leave the loop and compute a new retinet structure. Then we check whether the new retinet structure is actually estimated to uh, be an improvement over the old structure. And if that is the case, we try to find query results from the old net that could still be valuable for the new net um, and store that as these reusable indexers. Uh, and afterwards, we populate the new uh, network with these uh, potentially reusable indexers in mind. At the end, uh, we swap the retinets. So one important trick here is um, that the, we abort the population of the new retinet as soon as its size exceeds the size of the old retinet, which has two effects. The first of which is, uh, I think, very straightforward. It basically makes sure that the new net is, uh, in some sense, better than the old net. But also, uh, it makes it so that this repopulation only incurs a constant factor overhead on the execution time of one loop iteration if the query graph is fixed uh, and we use appropriate indexing structures. Since then, 
this population of a retinet would actually be linear in execution time uh, in the retinet size. We have prototypically implemented uh, what I presented uh, to, in order to perform an empirical evaluation with the aim of addressing the following research questions. Uh, first, we wanted to see whether uh, considering information about the host graph during retinet construction could actually lead to better performing nets. Second, uh, we wanted to investigate whether the overhead incurred by adapting the retinet to changing host graph characteristics would be acceptable uh, using our strategy. And finally, uh, we wanted to explore whether adapting the retinet uh, to changing host graph characteristics could actually lead to an improvement in performance. And therefore, we used uh, queries and data taken from two benchmarks, the LDBC social network benchmark and the train benchmark, where we adapted the queries provided as part of those benchmarks to match our definition uh, of graph queries, which meant that we had to remove some advanced query specification features such as attribute constraints or nested graph conditions. And then we implemented uh, four, or yeah, we used um, four retinet construction strategies um, to create retinets and execute these queries over the data sets. Um, the first of which uh, is called Viatra and just uses uh, the external Viatra tool, which is an existing uh, very mature and, and popular tool for incremental graph pattern matching, uh, which also supports uh, much more advanced features than uh, what we consider a graph query here, but which importantly uses uh, a host graph insensitive technique for retinet construction. Uh, then we compare that to a strategy called emulate, which uses the same net as Viatra, but uses our execution engine for uh, retinets in order to facilitate the comparison to the two host graph sensitive uh, techniques, uh, static and dynamic. Static uh, basically creates a static host graph sensitive net using the characteristics of the final host graph. So in a sense, uh, it uses information that might not be av uh, available uh, and could be considered cheating. And the, the technique that we propose in this paper uh, is called dy dynamic, which similarly to static uses our approach for um, host graph sensitive retinet construction, but creates the initial net over the initial potentially even empty host graph and maintains that net using our adaptation strategy. For the LDBC social network benchmark, we transformed the data created by the, or we created one data set using the provided uh, data generator and transformed that into a sequence of element creations according to the created timestamps. Then we uh, executed uh, 12 of the benchmarks queries, which are called uh, interactive 1 to 12, um, using the four strategies for retinet construction and measured the execution times for subsequences of a thousand changes each. Uh, and here you can see um, the, the execution times we measured for. Uh, the four graph queries uh, where the difference in execution times between the host graph sensitive and insensitive techniques was the largest. That's interactive one, five, and, and 12. Actually, it's, it's even the ones where the uh, difference between the best and worst performing strategy was the largest. And the execution times there indicate that um, the host graph sensitive techniques do actually have a, a significantly better performance. Then uh, the other two queries uh, in this figure are the ones where the host graph sensitive techniques performed worst compared to the host graph insensitive techniques. And these uh, results show that at least for this example, the overhead incurred uh, by the host graph sensitive techniques was acceptable. Our uh, measurements for memory consumption basically mirror these uh, the, the execution time measurements uh, with the difference that uh, Viatra seems to have a uh, better baseline performance with respect to memory consumption. Um, and these measurements also validate uh, to some extent our initial supposition that the execution time of a retinet is largely correlated with the number of uh, tuples stored in the net's indexers. Since the, uh, this, this benchmark scenario that we executed didn't really include um, a drastic change of host graph characteristics during evolution, uh, we also created a synthetic scenario where that was the case. Um, and we, in, in this uh, figure, we see that uh, for this artificial scenario, the dynamic strategy actually does perform uh, significantly better um, than the static strategy. Regarding the train benchmark, I'll be rather brief. Uh, we 
uh, we basically ran a, a benchmark scenario part, uh, provided as part of the benchmark um, over a sequence of host graphs of increasing size. Um, and there we didn't really observe in a significant difference in execution time uh, between the host graph sensitive and insensitive techniques, indicating that there is no really not really a benefit here, which might be the case because the queries of that benchmark were rather simple. Um, but we also see that the overhead uh, again seemed to be not that large. So basically, uh, our results uh, we believe indicate that considering information about the host graph during retinet construction can lead to better performing retinets, and the incurred overhead, uh, both by the uh, host graph sensitive construction technique and the uh, dynamic ad adaptation, was acceptable for, at least for our examples. And conceptually, adapting the retinet. Um, to changing host graph characteristics uh, could improve performance. However, uh, I want to stress here that the scenario which we used to test that was uh, completely synthetic. So uh, there's basically no claim on the relevance in practice. Uh, to conclude, our contribution is a host graph sensitive uh, technique for retinet construction and maintenance, uh, which consists of a host graph sensitive cost function for retinets, a simple greedy partitioning algorithm to create the retinets, and then uh, a technique for adapting the retinet to changing host graph characteristics during the evolution. Um, our empirical evaluation results uh, demonstrate that uh, this host graph sensitive technique can be beneficial in some cases, but it also shows that it is, doesn't always achieve a significant improvement, uh, but it also has a rather low overhead, at least for our examples compared to host graph insensitive techniques. In future work, we plan to extend uh, this approach to advanced query features, such as they are supported by Variatra, uh, e.g. Uh, attribute constraints or nested graph conditions, and also extend it to more general forms of discrimination networks than retinets, such as gator networks, which we've worked with in the past. All right, then here's uh, some references to the benchmarks uh, and the Viatra tool. Uh, and now I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you very much.